Cape Horn, the southernmost headland of the Terra de Fuego in Chile. The confluence of two great oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific. With treacherous weather conditions and extreme swell, when you are behind the rock, I mean, when you are at the rock taking your selfie, then you are in the shelter already. Uh, I think the most wild is when, when you have really big storms. There's a 200 meter plateau, like 100 miles out, and there you can have this, uh, the big swell coming from the Southern Ocean. That can get really nasty. Some incidents in particular in the Drake Passage and in the Southern Ocean that these did exist or do exist. My name is Arne Biaster. I'm a professor for ocean dynamics um, at Geomar in Kiel University in Germany. Southern Ocean is basically connected to all the three world oceans, to the Pacific Ocean, to the Atlantic Ocean, and to the Indian Ocean. It's the only pass in the global ocean that is not blocked by any continents. And that has important consequences for ocean currents because that basically runs around Antarctica um, from, from east to west. The Drake Passage between Antarctica and South America, this is the, the smallest gap it's just 800 kilometers wide and this gap basically funnels um, not only the wind but also the ocean currents. The um, conditions in particular in this part of the Southern Ocean are quite heavy. The land masses, as said before, also funnel the wind. Iceberg, which uh, spin off Antarctica. 50 meter waves are already quite extreme in terms of the world ocean. There's also the risk of having so-called rogue waves these can be up to 30 meters in height. In 1914, the Panama Canal was opened to facilitate commercial transport and avoid navigation through the Drake Passage. And the Horn returned to being one of the most remote places on the planet and became the grail for all offshore sailors. The first yachts to sail in the Whitbread round the world navigated the Horn in January 1974. There's nothing like Cape Horn, um, just what it represents. It's striking physically, um, really. It's, it's the Mount Everest for sailors. I mean, I think fewer people have rounded Cape Horn than have summited Mount Everest, which is pretty ridiculous. I've never been there. It's a long way sailing to go there. I just take it as it comes. And um, I think not many people sailed around Cape Horn. We'll be, uh, we have a big party. We will bring some booze. <laughs> we will have a disco ball, some music. We will eat a nice uh, jamon or saucisson. And yeah, we will just do as we do with the crew. So we're looking forward to it. I've heard that some sailors have got a piercing once they pass Cape Horn. And many of them, they also just put like a, a nice little note with latitude, Cape Horn, and they do a nice picture. Some of them, they shave. Some of them drink a bit of uh, alcohol. I will probably have a little rum with the crew and maybe a little tear will appear at some point. I hope so because it's going to be intense after so many days uh, just looking at the horizon. I think it's going to, to feel nice to just see a little bit of, of earth again at some point. And it's one of the wildest places on, on earth so I think it's going to be pretty emotional. Cape Horn, it's uh, back, uh, being back to the civilization. You've been through, you know, also the Nemo point in uh, the Pacific. It's a point where you're at the further point from civilization, uh, where there is civilization in the world. So when you go, when you pass the Cape Horn, you're back, you're back to the safe, to the safe world. Mm -hmm. 